Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. In this video, we'll break down and simplify eight recent past exam questions on Chapter 3, The Circulatory System. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and visit my channel page for short summary videos and my resource store by clicking on the link in the description for complete revision and teaching materials. Let's begin, starting with question number one on topic 3.1. If you struggle with any of the questions today, head down to the description. You can find links to my short summary videos containing literally everything you need to know. So don't understand a question, head down, watch the relevant video, then come back and attempt it. Complete the table to show some of the components of blood, their function and a benefit each component provides for a performer. This one's worth four marks and is very easy to answer because the table shows us exactly what we need to include. Let's start with the first column, the components of blood. There are four you need to know. You've been given two already, platelets and red blood cells. So the remaining two are plasma and white blood cells. So which one fits this box here? Well, the function, kill bacteria, suggests that this one must be white blood cells. And in fact, I'll reveal my answers here. So white blood cells is the missing component of blood, which fits with this function. Okay. What about the function then for red blood cells? Well, we should know that red blood cells contain hemoglobin, which carries oxygen. So their main role is to transport oxygen around the body. So clearly you need to know the components of blood and the function of each one. But now we need to move on to the benefits for a performer. So red blood cells transport oxygen. We've already been given this answer. That allows performers to work for long periods of time because they're receiving that oxygen so they can continue producing energy via aerobic respiration. But what about these two? Platelets help with blood clotting. How could that benefit a performer? Well, it speeds up recovery from minor injuries like cuts or grazes. If you were to get a cut during um, a game or a fight in boxing, for example, the platelets help to clot the blood, so we don't continue bleeding, and that means we can continue playing or training. Okay, next one, white blood cells kill bacteria. How could that benefit a performer? Well, it helps us to avoid illness, and that allows us to continue training, not have so many breaks from training, which would obviously have a negative impact on our performance. So quick look at the mark scheme. And white blood cells, a performer will be healthy. They'll recover faster so they can continue or resume participating um, or training. So similar point to the one that we made there. White blood cells carry oxygen, so we can confirm those ones were correct. Minor cuts do not prevent a performer from continuing to play um, in terms of platelets helping with blood, uh, blood clotting. So that's one potential benefit there. It stops or it's, um, the platelets mean that uh, a minor cut isn't gonna stop someone from continue playing or from training, but it also helps to speed up recovery time if we suffer one of those injuries. Okay, question number two on topic 3.2 here. So the diagram, um, pardon me, the diagram shows the heart with three structures labeled A, B, and C. Identify, which is a really simple command word here, similar to name or state. Identify the structures labeled A, B, and C and describe a different function of each structure. This one's worth six marks. So we're gonna get three marks first of all for simply naming or identifying these three structures. So we'll start off with A, and this is the atrium, okay? The atria, the two atria here, these uh, chambers sit at the top of the heart. So this is one of the atria, but is it the right side or the left side? Clearly from looking at the diagram, it appears to be on the left, but we need to imagine that this is our heart and we are facing outwards from the screen, which means that this is in fact the right atrium, okay? B, this is on the left side then, and this is the ventricle, one of the two chambers that sit at the bottom of the heart. So this is our left ventricle. And then finally, C, um, this is the exit from that left ventricle. So as this ventricle contracts, it's gonna force blood outwards through this blood vessel, okay? So we have a valve here um, at the entrance to this blood vessel, which is in fact the aorta. C is pointing directly to a valve. It is in fact a semi-lunar valve, Okay, but valve would be sufficient for the mark. So we got right atrium, left ventricle and valve as our three structures. But now we need to describe a different function of each one. So what is the function of the right atrium first of all? Well, 
it receives deoxygenated blood from the body. And it's really important to include whether, the, whether or not the blood is oxygenated or deoxygenated um, at, at any point during the cardiac cycle or any point during, the, you know, during its, its pathway through the heart as it travels through the heart. Now that blood returning from the body via the vena cava, this, uh, this blood vessel here, is deoxygenated because it's given all its oxygenate or it's given all its oxygen up to the body. So it returns as deoxygenated blood to that right atrium. Okay. Function of the left ventricle then? Well, this ejects oxygenated blood. If you remember, oxygenated blood exists on the left side of the heart and deoxygenated on the right. This ejects oxygenated blood to the body via the aorta. And I put this in brackets because you don't actually need that additional detail, but it's going to eject blood through the aorta, which goes off to the body. Finally, C, we've got that valve, the semilunar valve there in the uh, entrance to the aorta. What's the purpose of that valve? Well, it prevents blood from flowing backwards from the aorta and back into the ventricle. We only want blood to go in one direction and that valve prevents that from happening. So we won't spend too long on the mark scheme here because it just confirms what I've already mentioned in my example answer, but you can pause the video there to have a look through it if you wish. Okay, topic 3.3 now. Describe the long-term effects of regular exercise on the heart. So regular exercise, we could call this training. What impacts are long-term training going to have on the heart? Two marks available for this one. Let's have a look. I've put cardiac hypertrophy occurs. That basically means the heart muscle is getting bigger and stronger. So cardiac hypertrophy occurs as a result of regular exercise. So one point being made there. This allows for stronger contractions and an increase in the volume of blood ejected per beat. Of course, if the heart is bigger and stronger, it can contract more strongly, and that's going to force more blood out of the heart each time it beats. Okay, so actually I've made three different points there, but we'll see what the mark scheme says. So, cardiac hypertrophy, heart size increases, hypertrophy, thicker walls. These are all synonyms, so... The heart size gets bigger. That's a similar thing to saying that hypertrophy occurs or the walls of the heart get thicker. Okay, essentially the heart is increasing in size and strength. Now this allows for stronger contractions. Let's see if this is visible here in the mark scheme. There we go. Increased strength of contractions. So actually that's all I needed to include for my two marks. But I also added this final point and an increase in the volume of blood ejected per beat. In other words, stroke volume. And here we have stroke volume increases. Uh, we could have also said that cardiac output increases. Pause the video here. Take a look through some of the other points you could have included. But this is a really common question that's likely to come up. Okay, 3.2. Describe the role of each of the following structures in the pathway of blood through the heart. So similar to a question or a couple of questions back when we looked at the atria, ventricles, um, and the blood vessels there as well. So... Describe the role of these structures as blood moves through the heart. We're going to get one mark for each one. What does the vena cava do? Okay, so these are our four main blood vessels. The vena cava brings blood from the body and into the right atrium. And we need to mention whether or not that blood is deoxygenated or oxygenated. Now, in this case, it's deoxygenated because it's already given up its oxygen to the body, particularly the muscle cells. Okay. The pulmonary vein. Pulmonary relates to the lungs, so this one has to do something. Uh, has to be something to do with the lungs, and because it's a vein, we know that veins carry blood um, back towards the heart. So this is going to carry oxygenated blood from the lungs into the heart. So back to the heart because it's a vein. So oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atrium. Remember, the left side of the heart carries oxygenated blood. Number three, the aorta. This carries oxygenated blood from the left ventricle off to the body. And then the pulmonary artery, again relating to the lungs with that word pulmonary there, carries deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs. It's an artery. We know that arteries carry blood away from the heart. So this one must be from the heart. So from the right ventricle and then off to the lungs. So what does this question tell you? You need to understand all of the different structures in the heart and you need a good understanding also of the pathway the blood takes as it moves through the body, through the heart and off to the lungs as well. So mark scheme, 
Um, you can take your time to have a look through that one, but again, it very closely reflects what I've included here in the example answer. Okay, topic 3.3 now. Describe two long-term effects of exercise on the heart. Now, funnily enough, this is exactly the same question as we looked at uh, just a few moments ago. Exactly the same question and just a couple of papers later, which shows you that they do ask the same questions time and time again. I told you this was a really common one. You need to understand the impact of long-term exercise or long-term training on the heart. What could we go for? Aerobic training reduces the risk of chronic conditions such as heart disease. That was a point that we didn't make previously. So long-term exercise is also going to reduce your chance of those chronic conditions like heart disease. Also, exercising over long periods of time re uh, leads to an increase in cardiac output. Last time we talked about stroke volume, but I've just chosen a couple of different points we could have included there. This is exactly the same mark scheme that we looked at before as well, just duplicated. So again, clearly this is a question that we need to put some time and focus into. Okay, identify, nice easy command word there a different component of blood that has each of the following main functions. So again, we're back on the components of blood, just like we were with the first question with the table that we had to fill in. Which component of blood combines with oxygen and which component of blood clots blood? All right, so combines with oxygen, that's our red blood cells, and the platelets are involved with blood clotting. If we had gone for the white blood cells, of course, they are involved with the immune system. So they help protect us against bacteria and viruses or pathogens. Um, and then the plasma, which is the liquid component of the, of the blood, which helps to uh, transport all of these other blood cells, but also nutrients and uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide and things like that. So there's your mark scheme, a nice simple one. Take some time to look over that just to verify your answers. And then let's move on. Question 3.3. Describe the long-term effects of regular exercise on the heart. This is the third time this question has come up. We've only covered six papers in this particular video. So every question that's come up here has been from the June or May, June 2019 series and the November 2020 series. So six papers. And this is the third time this question has come up. So really good chance of this one coming up and uh, definitely spend some time on it. I've given you another example answer here. This one, in fact, though, they've given three marks to, so we need to make three points for this one. Okay, the walls of the heart become thicker. I told you before about cardiac hypertrophy. It's a very similar thing here. That means that the muscle or the size of the muscle of the heart is getting bigger. Um, so there's our first mark. This leads to an increase in stroke volume and cardiac output. So actually, there's probably two marks available for that, one for stroke volume and one for mentioning cardiac outputs, um, as well as bradycardia, though. I thought I'd include this as well to give another point, which is a resting heart rate below 60 beats per minute. So when our stroke volume goes up, we tend to experience bradycardia because our heart doesn't need to beat as often. Our heart rate can come down because we're pumping so much blood out every time it beats. That means our heart rate doesn't need to be as high when we're resting. Okay, and I have a quick look at the mark scheme. Oh yeah, I've given myself one tick in orange here just because that was unnecessary. It was an additional point. I'd already made my three points, uh, but better to be safe than sorry. If you have a bit of time at the end of the exam, why not come back and add some additional points to questions just to cover your bases? Always a good idea. Okay. Topic 3.1, describe two structural differences between arteries and veins. So this was something that hasn't come up yet, but we do, we do need to know the characteristics of arteries and veins, and we need to be able to describe the differences between the two. So veins contain valves to prevent low pressure blood from flowing backwards, but arteries do not. Arteries have thick muscular walls. The walls of veins are much thinner. Okay, so it's quite a simple question as long as we've learned the characteristics of arteries and veins. But the thing or, or one area that I foresee people might slip up on is just this little element here. So you might go ahead and say that veins contain valves to prevent blood from flowing backwards. That's fine. But you wouldn't get a mark for that because you hadn't compared it to the artery. And if we look at the question carefully, we have to describe two structural differences between the two. So just by talking about veins, we're not actually making a, or we're not, we're not highlighting a difference there. So we need to 
include both sides of the story. Veins contain valves, arteries do not. Arteries have thick muscular walls, veins do not. Okay, so that's where we're going to get our two marks from. We could have also talked about the width of the lumen, so that's the space inside the blood vessel. The arteries have a narrow lumen and the veins have a wide one. Um, arteries are also more elastic, they're stretchier because they have to deal with much more high pressure blood as they're carrying blood away from the heart. Whereas veins, uh, the blood in veins is much lower in pressure and so they don't need that elasticity. Okay, let's move on. In fact, that was the last question for this session on chapter three, the circulatory system. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions for how these videos could be improved. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you next time for 11 questions on chapter four, energy supply and the effects of exercise on the body.